Hello, everyone. The market clearly feels very, very bearish. It feels like it's being pulled down. It feels heavy. So one of the reasons why I wanted my webcam on is because I wanted to do this hand gesture so that you guys understand what I feel about the market. It feels very heavy. It feels like it's being pulled down. So in today's video, we're going to talk about why I'm leaning a bit short and what the next steps are for the market for this week. We're going to look at the macro news. Fed Powell speaks Tuesday. We're going to put all that together. We're going to take a look at the market and about the next steps for All right, so without further ado, let's get started with the video. So the main bit of news that we're looking at right now is on Tuesday, Fed Powell is going to speak at 12 p.m. So obviously that's going to affect the market. It's going to cause some sort of shift in price, 100%. And um, aside from that, you know, everything else <clears throat> is happening either pre-market or after 12 p.m. basically. So we could take a look at all of that news when we get to it. But for now, let's go ahead and just go straight into the charts. So number one, you guys know that last Thursday we were holding on to NASDAQ put. Obviously, they did really well. The NASDAQ ended up um, gapping down from here all the way down here to 305. And clearly, that was a very, very good trade. And the reason why we wanted to short the NASDAQ is because, first of all, the overextension from the upper level of the Bollinger Band was very, very prevalent in the NASDAQ as well as the large tech stocks. For example, we saw Amazon. Amazon was very overextended to the upside. Microsoft was also very overextended to the upside. And Google was also very, very overextended to the upside. So with these major trillion dollar companies, as well as the NASDAQ itself being very, very sharply overextended to the upside, it gave a good risk reward opportunity to go short. And clearly that worked out. So now moving forward, all right, if we just take a look at the spy you can see that this setup is very very weak and in my opinion the market feels very very heavy it feels like it's being pulled down so uh we're currently also short again um overnight and we're also short on mara puts as well so we're short um we're swinging puts on the spy as well as on mara and um, in general, you know, it's at most what I think can end up. So here's the main thing. Many people are leaning bearish. Many, many people are leaning bearish. The setup looks clearly, clearly bearish. It's very, very difficult to be bullish. All right. We're going to talk about the things that are bullish for a bit of a bounce back. But clearly this setup for it to break back above this high and reclaim major levels and for it to just bounce back up from this ugly setup is very, very rare. So many people are expecting it to get a gap down on Monday. Maybe even if we uh, gap up a bit on Monday, I don't think that this is going to break above 4, 414 to 415. And basically, even if it does give a bit of a bounce, 414, 415 should be the top, and then it should continue falling lower because, once again, the market feels very, very heavy. So, <clears throat> either I'm I'm bearish. This is very, very difficult for me to be bullish, but um, you know anything can happen. But essentially, Monday I'm expecting it to fall and break below this low. I'm expecting us to break below the lows that were made on uh, Friday. Um, 411. I think 410, 411 is definitely going to break. And we should, I would be surprised if we don't get a retest of at least 408 to 409. That'd be great. But um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's just very difficult to be bullish. Unless Monday we get a substantial green body close above 414, above 415 to 416. If we get a strong close above, then we would have to lean long again, in my opinion. But for now, based off of this setup, you have to be bearish. Um, so we could just quickly take a look at, you know, the SPX as well. So the SPX also came back to these major trend lines in the past. Obviously, the SPX, the SPY, everything was also very overextended. We came back to this major level of resistance, failed here, right? And just made this ugly candle. It's almost impossible. 
very, very, very unlikely to be. Uh, basically, if you're going bullish, if you're if you were trying to go long over the weekend, there's no technical bearing for that trade, other than, oh, you know, it was just a false move to the downside. We're gonna continue up. I mean, yeah. If that works, in my opinion, if the trade works out in your favor, that isn't good enough reason to have taken the trade. The more logical, the smarter trade would have been to short with a stop loss, which is what we're doing. But uh, if it works, that sucks. We didn't get the bounce, but this is a very bearish setup. We failed at resistance. Um, and basically, I'm expecting us to get a retest of these prior levels of resistance back here. And that should coincide with 408 to 409 on the SPY itself. So on the SPX, you could clearly see resistance. Um, you can take a look at the IWM. The IWM also, it, all of this stuff looks like there should be a pullback. And um, the reason why I also got into Mara puts is because the IWM, <clears throat> I'm expecting it to get a break, right? And if the IWM starts showing weakness, then Mara is also going to show weakness and Bitcoin is also going to show weakness. So we could take a look at Bitcoin uh, after this as well. But overall, the IWM, you can see the IWM has made a really crazy uptrend here. So I'm expecting it to get a bit of a break. So I would be very shocked if it just maintains above this. So basically the reason why we got into Mara puts, IWM should get a bit of a break as well. Um, but the one thing that could actually end up happening is um there are two main reasons why we might get a bit of a bounce and uh i'm going to show that but for now uh let's first take a look at the dollar the bonds and the vix so this is a chart of the dollar and thursday when we went short on the market the dollar was bouncing very heavily and i said that Usually when we get a bounce like this, when we open outside of the lower level of the bands and show a big strong green candle like this, there's usually at least one or two days afterward that is also very green. And that's why our short heading into Friday morning close or Friday morning open worked out tremendously because the dollar continued showing strength. So now we got two solid closes, right? Looking at this setup, if if you were looking at the dollar as if it was a stock, right? It makes sense that we will get, we could get a bit of a pullback on the dollar and basically get a retest of prior levels of support. See if we can hold the 38.2% fib or the 50% fib on this green candle here and then continue up. So, this is one of the reasons why we might end up getting a bounce in the market because the dollar could end up getting a pullback. And it makes sense that we might end up getting a pullback on the dollar. But that pullback on the dollar should not give up all of its gains, in my opinion. And if it does, then that would just denote a lot of buying pressure in the market. And once again, if the SPY ends up closing above 416, um, 416.50, then we can get lotto calls heading into uh, the next day. But yeah, so for now, the dollar looks like it could get a bit of a pullback and then continue up. That's my thought process on this, but definitely looks strong. But when it is showing this much strength, a pullback is uh, usually warranted and it's natural. All right. So we could take a look at the bonds. The bonds clearly, they showed a lot of weakness. And um, basically, we know that the bonds have a bit more of a correlated um, relationship. So with the dollar, the dollar has like a un it's uh, negatively correlated. But with the bonds, if the bonds are showing weakness, then usually the stock market also shows weakness. So clearly, we reclaimed this uptrend level on the bonds, and then we made a very big red candle. If we end up getting closes below 129, and especially back below this 128.20 level, then the weakness in the bonds are going to continue, and basically that weakness is going to show in the stock market. But clearly, this is not a very bullish setup for the bonds and then we could also take a look at the vix so the vix similar to the dollar has an inverse relationship on the market so if the vix is um showing strength then that means the market is showing weakness so currently 
The VIX also had a bit of a bounce, similar to what the dollar did. Uh, it was trading outside of the lower level of the bands, got a big green candle, and basically a retest. It's not as strong as the dollar, but it's showing continued strength here on the, on the VIX. But the main thing is now moving forward into the next day is if the VIX can continue showing the strength. This pragmatically does not look as strong, right? So this isn't a clear cut reason to just be bullish, but the VIX doesn't look as strong. It's still trading in a downtrend. And we know that if the downtrend continues, that means that the market should continue going up. But we need to start seeing some real strength out of the VIX to see uh, if basically we could break this downtrend and uh, start showing some strength. If that happens, then this whole structure on the VIX can start uh, moving upwards. So uh, there's that. Now that we went over the dollar, the dollar was one of the re main reasons why we could get a bit of a bounce. The second main reason why is Apple. So this is obviously, this, is, this and the dollar are probably the main reasons why we could get a bit of a, a bounce because with Apple showing this much strength, pragmatically, Apple is showing a crazy amount of strength. So if this strength on Apple can continue, which I'm not, I don't know if it can continue. I'm not going to bet on a trade uh, based off of Apple's strength, okay? But clearly, Apple is showing a lot of strength. Um, and usually when something like this happens, we can continue up. So we could end up breaking above 156 very, very easily tomorrow. And what that will end up doing with the overall market, I'm not sure. But if Apple can sustain its strength and continue upwards, it can help pull the rest of the market up. So that is the only caveat. So with the fact that the dollar is very overextended to the upside and the fact that Apple is showing a crazy amount of strength after reporting not amazing earnings, this is showing a lot of buying pressure in Apple. But basically now we need to see if it translates in the rest of the stock market. But of course, this is not a reason to go long. This alone is not a reason to go long. Um, once again, the market overall, it just feels much, much heavier than basically like this setup is just such an ugly setup. I can't stress how disgusting this setup looks. Um, and basically just going long here is literally like it's not a high quality trade setup. It could work, but that would be very unfortunate because it's just not a safe setup to go long. But uh, yeah, regardless, when something is showing this much momentum to the downside, when it's showing this much weakness, I would rather lean short unless we get a break and close above 416, 416.50, then I'll get like lotto calls. But I'll probably get lotto calls if we get a break above 416.50 or um, 417, definitely get some lotto calls, but then we would have longer term puts with a stop loss above this high here and that would be the setup honestly that would be the trade setup because we want to follow the momentum if we if based off of this setup we get a strong bounce in monday um this can end up flying to like 425 430 honestly 420, 420 is definitely on the table. If we can close above 416, 417, it's probably going to be like 423, 424 at least, which is going to be insane. And then by that point, people will end up becoming bullish way too late. And I think that would probably cause the most pain, honestly. That would cause the most pain to retail because right now everyone is bearish. It makes sense to be bearish. But if they rip it above, no one is ready for that. No one is bullish. So I think, oh, which is scary because that is actually the, that would cause the most pain if people end up going long, breaking above this high and getting another leg up to like the low to mid 420s. That is actually, uh, that is actually kind of scary if they do that. But regardless, we're going to go long. We're going to, we're going to make money either way, but overall. Uh, my bias is bearish. I would be very surprised if we get a bounce. The last thing I want to take a look at is lumber. 
So we can see that lumber is starting to clearly show weakness and it's closing below levels of support. And if we get a close below this level here, then we're even better. But we've seen in the past that when lumber starts to show weakness and it starts breaking below major levels of support, eventually that weakness also shows in the market. So if we get a nice solid close below 490, then it's going to be a good sign that uh, the market created some sort of a uh, local top. And then the last thing that I want to take a look at is Bitcoin. So of course, we're short Mara. Bitcoin, uh, this setup right here, we had a wick above the highs. And then we ended up closing red. So you could see here on um, Thursday, once again, we got a wick. So this candle wicked above the recent highs, but then we closed red. So that showed heaviness, that showed bearishness. And what happened, we are continuing to fall lower. So hopefully, it would be nice if this just can, <laughs> if this just cracks below all of these levels of support, and if we get a nice crack below twenty two thousand, then our Mara puts are gonna do really really well. And I hope that's what ends up happening. But currently, the reason why I'm showing this is because the IWM has a lot. IWM strength or weakness has a lot to do with uh, Bitcoin. Has a lot to do with gold silver it has a lot to do with economically sensitive stocks and everything like that so um if the iwm starts showing more weakness then bitcoin is going to show more weakness than usual but yeah overall this is not a bullish setup not that bullish on bitcoin this is clearly like we had a big red candle if usually when we get a setup like this on bitcoin we have another red day we have four hours left until the, the close for today but we should continue falling lower. I'd be very surprised if they could just keep this up or if they just bounce it off of these levels. That would be very surprising. But who knows? Anything is possible with uh, the crypto markets. But regardless, overall, my bias is bearish. We could get a bounce to 414, 415. I'll still be bearish. But then the only thing that will cause me to shift bullish is if on Monday we get a close above 416 to 416.50. And then Monday, uh, heading into um, power hour and into market close, we're going to look and we're going to determine what the next course of action should be. Cool. And yeah, um, aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you.